It was the most serious outbreak of violence between US, South Korean and North Korean forces in years, a full-blown battle on the famous demilitarized zone, what the Americans call the DMZ, that divides North and South Korea since the end of the Korean War in 1953. And the cause of this infantry battle wasn't American, North Korean or South Korean, but rather Soviet. The Joint Security Area at Panmunjom is the most famous part of the DMZ, the only place along the 38th parallel where the two sides are literally within touching distance of each other, and therefore one of the most tense places on Earth. Created in 1953, the JSA was originally designed for prisoner of war exchanges following the end of the Korean War and was used until 1991 for peace talks, and today remains a major tourist attraction. Both sides have constructed buildings facing each other, with three buildings actually straddling the frontier between North and South Korea, guard details from North and South Korea and the United States inside each and posted around the site. There have been many bloody incidents within the JSA, depending on the level of tension between North and South at any one time, and physical and occasional gunfights have occurred, resulting in casualties on both sides. Guarding the South Korean side of the JSA is a joint US and South Korean military unit. In 1984, this force was called the Joint Security Area Support Group, a battalion size and made up of four platoons of US and South Korean infantry. Within the JSA was posted a force of five officers and 35 enlisted men from this unit, providing guards around the buildings. The catalyst for the 40-minute gunfight on the 23rd of November 1984 was an attempt by Soviet translator Vasily Matuzok to defect. On a visit to the North Korean side of the JSA at Panmunjom from his post at the Soviet Embassy in Pyongyang, Matuzok gave his North Korean handlers the slip whilst taking photographs and crossed the MDL, the military demarcation line between the two Koreas. This was most famously demonstrated recently when President Trump stepped briefly into North Korea during a meeting with Kim Jong-un. As for Matuzok in 1984, believing he was now safe, he began to walk into the south, but two North Korean guards opened fire at him with their pistols. Matuzok ran for his life, yelling in English for help. The two North Korean soldiers charged after Matuzok, joined by half a dozen other North Korean soldiers, effectively invading South Korea. A further 15 North Korean troops, these ones armed with Type 68 assault rifles, piled over the MDL. Matuzok, in a panic, ran across the sunken garden, a formal garden area, and went to ground near the Bridge of No Return, famous for POW exchanges in the past. Meanwhile, Joint Security Force troops raised the alarm. By now, JSF troops had opened fire on the pursuing North Koreans. The North Korean soldier firing at Matuzok was hit and fell after being struck by JSF fire close to Checkpoint 4. Ten more US and South Korean troops emerged from Checkpoint 4 and moved into action, bringing the pursuing North Korean troops under heavy fire, pinning them down in the sunken garden area. US and South Korean guards at Checkpoint 5 also opened fire. All of this happened within one minute of Matuzar crossing the MDL. Captain Bert K. Mizuzawa, commander of the JSF, gathered up the Quick Reaction Force, the QRF, and rushed forward by jeep to assess what the hell was going on. Mizuzawa's QRF consisted of three nine-man rifle squads, each also having a two-man M60 machine gun team attached. Arriving 100 metres south of Checkpoint 2, about 15 minutes into the action, Mizuzawa led two squads forward to flank the North Koreans in the sunken garden. As they advanced, the US and South Korean troops located Matuzok. After confirming that the Soviet wanted to defect, Mizuzawa ordered him taken to the rear. Captain Mizuzawa now dealt with the North Korean forces in the sunken garden. 
One squad went left to protect the US and South Korean left flank and also to cut the North Koreans' reinforcement route to prevent them pouring any more troops over the border. This squad laid down heavy suppressing fire, rifle grenades apparently killing one North Korean and wounding several more. Leapfrogging forward, several American and South Korean soldiers assaulted the sunken garden, forcing several North Korean soldiers to surrender. Ordered to hold positions, a request for a ceasefire had been received from the senior North Korean officer at Panmunjom by telephone. Major Park asking permission to cross the border with six unarmed men and retrieve his dead and wounded soldiers. This request was granted shortly afterwards by senior command in Seoul. Captain Mizuzawa, as was his right under the terms of the Korean War armistice, demanded an immediate investigation into what had occurred, but Major Park swiftly removed his dead and wounded before a proper investigation could occur. The gunfight had resulted in casualties on both sides. A South Korean soldier had been shot dead, hit by a single bullet below his right eye, while a US soldier had been hit by a bullet in the chin and was evacuated for treatment. The North Koreans would admit that three of their soldiers had been killed and at least one wounded. Apparently, two North Korean guards were also executed by pistol shots behind the main North Korean buildings within minutes of the fight ending obviously punished for allowing Matozok to escape. 26 American and 17 South Korean soldiers were subsequently decorated for gallantry, receiving bronze stars and any who were injured, purple hearts. In 2000, the US Army upgraded many of these awards to silver stars in recognition of the intense infantry battle and the gallantry shown by participants. The defector Matuzok ended up living in the United States and was given a new identity to protect him from the attentions of the KGB. The potential for a resumption of violence at the Joint Security Area at Panmunjom remains very real even in 2022 as relations between North Korea, the United States and South Korea remain extremely tense and uncertain. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.